So in this video here, we're going to take a look at the reference section in the Autolytics documentation. So this is all the raw stuff where you can see all the arguments, all the tasks, different modes and so on, the default arguments where you can change it and also make modifications. It will also directly direct you to the source code from the Autolytics GitHub repository as well. If you want to do modification, it can also be used if you want to do contributions, open source contributions, fix pull request and all that, or just use it in your own applications and projects. So just jump straight into the Autolytics documentation. Up here at the top, we can see we have the reference. Also, all the other tabs here, we have videos pretty much covering all of it. But this reference section here is very important when you work with Autolytics often and basically want to do some custom stuff and use it for your own projects and application. So now I have just opened it up here. So this is basically just all the different data references that we have, engine, hub, utils, all the different models, NN. So this is the code structure that we have inside the GitHub repository. So if you just open up the GitHub repository and go inside Autolytics, we can see we have all these different tabs. Here we have the config, data, engine, hub, models, NN, solutions, triggers, and utils. So this is the exact same thing that we have inside the reference. Here we just have specifications, descriptions, and so on, what each of them are, the arguments, and also description about the arguments. Default values is also very important to know. So first of all here, we'll just go through some of the reference to see how we can actually like look it up, how we can use it, and then we'll jump into some code and see how we can use some of the examples. Over to the right, we can see the table of context. So for example, if we go inside, let's go inside our model to start with. We also have the export and all that, but this is basically just the old engine files of how we're creating the models, how we're creating the exporters and so on. When you use the Autolytics, either in the command line or Python code, it's just a few lines of code, but all of this is actually like wrapped up into these engines that does all the functionality under the hood. So if you want some more flexibility, customization and so on, this is where you should go in and look. So we have the over mod class, you can see the table of context, you can see the attribute. So when you call a model, you can access the class names directly by just calling it as an attribute on the model instance that you're creating. You can also get the transforms and all that. And you can call all these methods directly on top of it. So when we load in our Autolytics model, we just specify the path. This is what we are creating here. So it takes in the path to our YOLO file. We can specify the task here as well and also the bow. So if you're getting all the output and so on in the terminal, this is because this is set to true. So right now we can just go a bit further down and go down and see we have all these attributes. So we have the name, type and description. It is the exact same structure for all of these pages on the left side. So it's very easy to go through. In the start, it might feel a bit harsh and might be hard to go through and so on, but get familiar with it. This is very nice documentation structure, but also just in general, this is how most documentation is organized. So over here to right, we can just go down. Let's say that we want to look, do prediction. So this is when we call our model dot predict. This is exactly what's going to happen. First of all, here we have the source. So it could be an image, could be a tuple, NumPy array, tensor RT, uh, tensor engine, image, PLL image, and so on. And then we can just specify all different parameters. So this is the source that we just need to pass in directly. We have our stream, we have our predictor, and we also have these cards arguments. So all these arguments here, they could be, for example, if you want to show it, get the results and so on, but also just the different parameters, intersection of our union, confidence score threshold, and all that. And then it's going to return a list with the results. So this is a list of prediction results, each encapsulated in a results object. So now you might be wondering, or maybe you want to know how you can extract the results and so on. We can just click here and we'll actually like go to all the attributes that we have for this specific result class. So this is how you can extract each individual one, depending on if you're running batch and so on, you get your results, you have your batch. So you take the zero index of your results and then you can access each of these end attributes. So you just have your results dot boxes, results dot probabilities, key points and so on. And then you can extract all of them. You can see the type, you can see the method and so on that you can call on top of each of them. If you, for example, want to convert to NumPy, to CUDA, go back and forth between the CPU and the GPU, and also all these other different stuff. If you want to save it, if you want to show it, we've seen that in some of the tutorials as well. They even have examples in here. So if we take our results, we're just going to iterate through our, all our results. 
and take our bounding boxes. We can either show it or save it directly. It's going to create the annotations on top of it. So this is just for the results. Now we, show, now we sort the model, we sort the results. We can do the exact same thing for the trainer, the hub, the different models and so on. So if you go down to the Yodel models, we can basically just see how those are created as well. So this is the predict function. Let's see if there's something else that we can take a look at. So these are the main like engines that we probably like play around with and also just to understand how the whole training concept works, how you run inference and all that. We also have the data. We can go in and take a look at the data set, also the data loaders. If you want to do some other post-processing, pre-processing, converters for your data set and so on, this is where you can do it. Build transform, cast labels. You can see all of them over here to the right. So we have the YOLO data set, get labels, cast labels. These are not the most interesting ones, but if you want to do customizations, you have to go in and use these. We can see the build, augment. If you want to apply other augmentation steps and so on, you can go in and do that here on your images because it's going to run some default ones to start with. We have the base transform, we have the labels. So here, just converting it here to 640 by 640. And it's also going to transform the labels. Apply image, you can do all these different functionality over here to the right. So it's actually like this mosaic here, it's going to do that automatically. You can look it up what it is, We're going to mix up, random perspective, random HSV, random flip. So all of these different stuff is just data augmentation that we apply for a model so to generalize better. You can have this in your training data set when you're actually like loaded, exported for whatever platform that you're using or inside here for annotator, but it will also do it automatically when you run the training with Ultralytics. So when you're inside the reference and want to see the act like source code, we can just directly go in and access it as well. So for example, for the call method here on our predictor, we can go in and see what happens. So this is the source code. It's inside Ultralytics engine predictor.py. So what happens when I actually take our model, our whole predictor, and just throw our image directly into that. We have our call method, which will be called automatically. That's why you can throw the image directly into the model or call the model.predict. So we have the source equals a none. We have the model that you want to run a prediction on, stream, and then we have all the other arguments with the confidence score and all of that. Then if you said stream, it's going to run the stream inference, or then it's basically just going to list all the results together. If you run a streaming here, it's just going to stream it as a generator. Let's go down and see if there's some other cool stuff. But yeah, it is pretty nice that you can go in and see the direct source code, and then you can access inside the GitHub repo. If you clone it, fork it, if you're doing like pull request changes, want to do contributions and so on, definitely get familiar with this. Right now, let's jump inside the models again. Let's just take an example. So we can just directly copy it. I'm going to open up a Google Colab notebook just to show you guys like how easy it is. Take the examples directly. Right now, we need to delete these. This is how we can import YOLO from Autolytics. First of all, we inside a Google Colab notebook. Make sure that you pip install it. If you run into any problems, make sure that you upgrade it to the latest version. So from Autolytics, we're going to import YOLO. We can create an instance of our model. So this is our base model class from the references where we just specify the path. Once we create an instance of that, we can just call the predict where we specify our source. We can also have all the other arguments and so on if you want to save it, for example. So we can say set save equal to true. Then we can train our model on the Coco 8 small data set for free epochs. We can run the evaluation and then we can export it. So this is pretty much the whole pipeline. If you have your custom data set, you just swap out this data, uh, data set YAML path file to the, uh, the, the, the path to that file. Then we train it, <laughs> do validation and we export it. Load model, do prediction, validation, training, export. This is the whole computer vision pipeline in just five lines of code. So this is pretty cool. We can just run some of them. Let's just try to distribute them out here. So we first train it, then we can run our evaluation after and then export it. So this is just a very small data set uh, from Coco. So it's just a very small sample data set. And we can run each of these individual ones. Now we need to specify the image. We're just going to use this example image from Autolytics. 
set up the model, we do our prediction. It's going to run the inference for just one image. It's going to download the model automatically. If you want to run your own custom models that you have trained, you can just specify it here. So after it's done training, you can directly call it. So this one here doesn't exist. Need to delete these. There we go. So now it's going to download the image, run the inference. We can see it has downloaded the model over here to the left. So once after done training and so on, you can just take the model weights and specify it in here, create a new instance, and then you can run inference with your new trained models. So now we get this run directory, detect, predict, and we have our bus.jpg. We're detecting some people walking around here, a bus. So this is pretty awesome. And just two lines of code. You can also go in and hit train directly. It's going to train it just for free epochs as an example. Download the data set automatically. Inside the documentation, we have all the data sets and so on. If we go inside our reference tab again, we can see we also have all these other different types of things for the annotator, for example. We also have the custom annotator. We have a video covering that already. So we can have a detection model. Just getting the bounding boxes, we have the SAMB model which is basically just going in and doing segmentation. Then we can do auto labeling with the auto lyrics as well. So definitely check that video out. Here we see an example of how you can do it. And it's going to generate your data set. You can just swap it out, train your own custom model and run it. So now one epoch, two epoch, we can run model evaluation after and export in to ONX. This is pretty important to know if you want to do customizations and also just to understand how are the things working under the hood. Yes, it is just running a few lines of code and you can have it all up and running. But if you run into any problems, errors, if you want to get higher accuracy, tune some different parameters, apply to specific use cases, do customization and so on, it's very important. And then the reference tab is for that. Get a pretty good overview. It's very well structured. And then you can use that directly. Hope you have learned a ton this video here. Definitely go in, check it out. It is very valuable. You will learn a ton from it. Just the whole code structure, how to read documentation, and also how it works under the hood. Hope you learned a ton. Hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning.